friends, today it's time to play What's in the Box? Angela, here are your three thrift store finds for you. I hope these aren't too tricky, but I'm sure you're down for the challenge. Liz. I sure am down for the challenge. So let's find out what's in this box. What's in the box? Um, really quickly before I forget, Liz, the official craft nerd, is who sent me my box. As if you guys already knew who I was talking about when I just said Liz. I sent my box to Brandy over at the DIY Struggle. You guys have seen me collab with her before. We are really good friends here on YouTube. And then the fourth person today is Emily from Farm Charm Chic. Um, I will have a playlist in my description box. Check out everyone else's videos. There's going to be tons of thrifting inspiration. I, for one, am obsessed with thrift flips right now and just watching other creators like the creativity and the imagination that people come up with when it comes to thrift items like what's one person's trash is another person's treasure and i have having so much fun coming up with some really cool ideas lately so let's get into it i see something that i love already oh my gosh oh i think one piece fell off. We'll have to figure out where that guy goes and fix him. How cute are these? I don't even know what I'm going to do with them, but they're so cool and so fun. They look like handmade almost. Like, I don't even know what they're made out of really, really awesome. Um, I'm super excited about that one. So this is actually the last project that I ended up doing. I was pretty stumped on what I was going to do with these, but since it was the first thing I pulled out of the box, I wanted to show it as my first project in the video. I'm taking some ivory chalk paint and I'm painting all of the roses with this. I do water it down because I want it to be more of a white wash and not cover up all of that beautiful texture and color that these pieces originally were. Next, I'm taking my mineral color on a small detailed paintbrush because I want to give this a little bit more dimension. I thought with just that whitewash on it, it was looking a little bit flat. So I took the paint and I put it in all of the little creases and the grooves of the rose petals. And it's a very subtle difference. I'll show you here in a second, but I like the way this looked. So the one on the right has that added detail. So I got this Joanna Gaines Magnolia Home paint sample from Habitat for Humanity when I was there in Virginia. First of all, I open it and look at the top. It is rust, all rusted, brand new sample. And then like, look at that. Like, it's just, I mean, I'm sure it just needs mixed up, but like, doesn't that just look gross? I don't know. I don't know about this paint, you guys. Have you ever used this? I haven't, but I'm about to find out if it's any good. I bought two cans of this color because I thought it was so pretty. Olive Grove. But let's mix it up and see. Once the paint was mixed up, it was totally fine. I don't know why I was being dramatic there. I think I was a little thrown off when I saw that rust when I opened a brand new can of paint, but I'm just painting all of the leaves in this color, and it is a really beautiful green color. This one, I did not end up watering down that paint mixture. I just left it solid. And then I'm taking a baby wipe and I'm going to start going over all of the edges to bring back some more of that original clay look underneath. Now we're gonna move on to attaching them. So I have this mirror that I got from the Target Dollar Spot. It was $5. It's a pretty large mirror. And I'm going to start placing these around the edges 
of this mirror and it's only gonna go on like one part of the mirror and I know filming mirrors is just so attractive when you get to see me just staring at myself while working on this project and eating some popcorn late on a Friday night. <laughs> But once I had my placement, I just took some E6000 and I started gluing all of these down and I let that sit overnight to dry. Next, I wanna add in some more detail to this. So I'm taking this gold leaf that I got on Amazon. I will link it down below for you along with this adhesive size, which is what you use for gold leaf. Also got that on Amazon, I will link it below. But you want to apply your size only where you want the gold leaf to go and that is the only place it's going to stick and then you want to let the adhesive size set up for about 30 minutes before you apply your gold leaf on top after the 30 minutes and my adhesive size was ready to go it's going to be tacky to the touch so i just grabbed some of my gold leaf flakes and started placing them all around my florals and the greenery wherever I had added that adhesive and it's kind of hard to tell here because it does go on like a milky white and then turns clear so I had to keep feeling around on my flowers to feel where that glue was or the adhesive was but after you add all of your gold leaf you just want to take a soft cloth microfiber cloth is what I'm using here or a lint-free rag and you're just going to start rubbing that gold leaf away and it is only going to stay and stick where that adhesive was. I also took a paintbrush after that and just got off any other loose pieces. Next I'm taking some 20 millimeter beads, put them onto a skewer stick with painter's tape so that they wouldn't roll around on me. And I'm taking my fawn colored paint to paint these. I do end up watering down this paint a little bit as well so that the wood would show through and you can see that here. So the last thing I need to do is attach my bead hanger to the back of this mirror. And I really struggled trying to figure out how to make this work. So I hot glued that one piece down and then whoop, it just pops right off. It literally did nothing. So I was pretty stumped on this for a while. I ended up getting frustrated and doing it off camera. But essentially what I did was took my E6000, put it down underneath of that wire, bent the wire over so that it would be you know surrounded by the e6000 glue and then i took some masking tape and taped it down to hold it in place and i did leave that masking tape there so that it is in like extra secure hopefully secure hold for this piece and that was all i did for this one I hung it up on my wall outside of my bathroom and i also added on some command picture hanging strips just to make sure that it's just not held on by this bead hanger and it has a little extra security. But this is how it turned out. I absolutely love this piece. Let me know in the comments, what would you have done with these clay roses? I would love to know some other ideas. This reminds me of those like picture windows like the big ones that people are making right now but like a scaled down version so I wonder if we can do like a mini like that that would be really cool these ones do this one says this one has a sticker on it from Goodwill $2.99 the other ones didn't have a sticker on them I have like so many ideas for this for like holiday decor is like where my mind is going right now. So I'll have to see what I come up with for this one. This project is definitely the easiest from today. So I'm gonna start out by just removing the back of this frame and taking out that glass piece. We're not gonna use it at all. Then I'm giving the whole frame a light sanding just because this does have a really smooth surface to it. And even though I'm using chalk paint, I don't always trust that it's going to stick to the surface. So I like to sand my pieces before adding the paint. 
and I'm going to paint the entire frame in the color Fawn by Waverly, making sure to get into all of those little cross sections. Next, I'm taking some wire. This is just floral wire, and I'm cutting off a small little section of it, and then taking these 12 millimeter beads, and I'm gonna start stringing them all along my wire. And what we're making for this is a little beaded wreath to go on our picture frame window. Once the wreath is as big as I wanted it, I just took the two ends of the wire, twisted them together, and then folded the long ends of it inside of the beads. Now I need to decide what ribbon I want to use to hang up my wreath with. So I started eliminating them one by one until I narrowed down to just the black leather ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I cut a piece of my, my leather ribbon and then I'm just hot gluing the end together, leaving some of it to wrap around the top of the picture frame. And then I just glued that down as well after I decided how low I wanted it to hang. Now I just need to embellish my wreath with some little florals. These are all from the Dollar Tree as well. I'm using this little like yellow, I was gonna say yellow greenery, <laughs> wow. Yellow florals and then this little like grass looking one. I thought this, or like wheat maybe, I thought it was really cool looking. And then I added in a tiny little pine cone and one of those pumpkins from the scented like they're not, I don't know that they're potpourri, maybe they are, but those little bags that you can find at the Dollar Tree right now. Next, I wanted to pick out one of these fall words that I found at the Dollar Tree. They say, farm fresh, hello autumn, give thanks, welcome fall blessed and then hello fall. So I ended up picking out hello autumn. I wanted to see what all came in this set first because you really can't tell just by looking at it. And then I'm taking my ivory colored chalk paint and just like I did with those white roses in our first project, I'm giving it more of a white wash because I still want to see that wood peeking through. And I did not glue this to my window in case I ever wanted to change it out. But that was it for this one. I think it is super adorable. But again, I'd love to know what you would have done with this frame. ideas for this that I've actually been wanting to do for a while now so this is really cool inside is nice wood oh ooh, these come out too I don't even have to stay in there I think I'll probably keep them but really really cool I wonder if the outside is wood because it almost has like a plasticky feel to the outside, but the inside is all wood. So Mikolov, Mikolov cigars, handmade cigars. And I think this one was $3 each, if that is the tag. So let's uh, get to work. Thanks, Liz. Now this project, I would say, threw me for a loop. I changed my mind several times during this process, but I'm going to start out by removing all of the stickers. There were several stickers on this box, just using my heat tool and a scraper or a putty knife. 
And then with my Goo Gone, I still needed to get all of that sticky residue off of these boxes before I could sand it down. That way it didn't just gunk up my sandpaper. And I wanted to sand this down because again, it was a very shiny, smooth surface and my paint was not going to stick to it. So I'm using my Zinzerbin primer here just to make sure that I get some good adhesion with the paint that I want to use. And I know I'm going super fast, but I didn't want this video to be too crazy long because like I said, I changed my mind several times here, but I'm only going to show you the parts that I did keep in. So you can see I taped off the inside because I wanted to paint that black part of the box. I ended up painting the entire inside white. So taping off the inside really wasn't necessary. Next, I found this fabric at the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna cut it out. We're going to line both the top and bottom inside of this cigar box. So I'm gonna take my Mod Podge, put a good layer all over the inside, and then I'm going to lay my fabric down right on top of that, allowing it to kind of overlap the sides a little bit. And once it dries, I'm going to cut off that excess. I also added a layer of the Mod Podge on top of the fabric as well. Next, I wanted to add some jute twine to cover up those raw edges. So I'm just laying it down right along the seams with my hot glue. Now comes the fun part of decoupaging and adding all of the embellishments. So I found this napkin at the Dollar Tree and I'm just using a wet water paintbrush to kind of map out where I want to rip this. And then it rips really nicely right along that water line. And again, I'm taking some this time decoupage glue and I laid it down, put my napkin down on top, use my finger to kind of spread it out, lay it down, but I did still get some wrinkles, which I was totally fine with. And I also take a layer of the decoupage glue on top of the napkin as well and let that dry. Once the glue is dry, I'm taking my sandpaper and we're just gonna go along the edges to rip off any of that excess napkin that is hanging off. Now I'm gonna start adding in kind of like an ombre effect. So I'm using that same green Joanna Gaines paint that I used earlier, laid down a section of the green where I wanted that to be. And then I also take just some basic white acrylic paint, start overlapping the two colors and then blending them together. And I worked back and forth doing this until I was happy with how the gradient looked. Now for some additional detail, I'm taking my ink pad. This is from Tim Holtz and it's the color Weathered Wood. And I just put it on this like letter stamp set that I have and I started adding a few stamp sections to my box. Next, I'm taking this IOD trimmings mold and I want to add some trim around the box. So you wanna make sure that you always align your mold with some cornstarch so that the air dry clay doesn't stick. So I just rolled up my clay like a little snake, laid it down into my mold, scraped off the excess and then pulled it out of the mold and it comes out super easy. I This is the first time I've used this and I absolutely love it. So I ended up making five of those because four wasn't quite long enough. And the first time that I did this, I let the clay dry before applying it to the box and it shrunk way too much. So the second time I thought I would add it to my box and glue it down while it was still wet, I did end up with some cracks, but I just filled those in with some joint compound. Now I know this part is a little bit out of frame, but you have seen me do raised stencils several times on my channel. I will link a video for you to watch if you don't know how to do that. Next, I'm taking these pop-up stickers from the Dollar Tree, painting them with my ivory colored chalk paint because I wanted something to kind of go between my trimming mold and then the box because there was kind of a slight gap there and I thought this kind of finished it off really nicely. And I did add some of that raised stencil to the top of my box as well, which you can see here. Now I'm taking my antique Waverly wax and I just wanna start distressing this box up a bit because I do want it to look aged and like it's been around for quite a while. And this is where I think I might have gone too far with it. I don't know, you guys need to tell me what you think. I was having a lot of fun with this process. Like I said, I changed my mind several, several times, but let me know what you think of the outcome and what you would have done with this box.
That's all I got for you today, friends. Don't forget to check out my description box. Check out all of the other creators that I partnered with today, and I'll see you in the next one.